If you want to know about the higher cost of a higher education, consider this. Consumers now owe more on their student loans than they do on their credit cards. With us today is the man who brought us that statistic, uh, Mark Kankrowitz. He's publisher of FinAid.org. He joins us from Pittsburgh this morning. That's a surprising and uh, staggering statistic uh, there, Mark. I mean, when did this happen? When did student loan debt outpace that, a credit card debt? Well, it happened in June. It started uh, in probably about September 2008 when the total credit card debt was about $975 billion. At that point in time, it turned a corner and started uh, dropping a total of 15% over the next 21 months until student loan debt, which has increased $300 billion over the last four years, caught up with it. Now, what is behind that? Is that the deleveraging story where we're seeing people pay down their credit card debt and this is just a relative scale, or are we seeing more people return for education because of the lack of jobs and the like? It's, it's a combination of factors, I and mean, it's partly that the minimum monthly payments on credit cards have gone from 2% to 4%, and credit limits have come down. It's also uh, the counter-cyclical effect where during a recession and for a few years afterwards, more people go to college. Mm -hmm. But student loan debt isn't forgiven in bankruptcy like some others are. You point out that you, uh, frankly, almost have to pass away to get this debt off your balance sheet. Right, and federal student loans and private student loans cannot be discharged in bankruptcy, although there is legislation in Congress that would potentially discharge private student loans in bankruptcy. But uh, for the most part, this debt sticks around for the rest of your life. They tend to have 20, 25, maybe even 30 year repayment terms, so it's uh, not debt that you pay off very quickly. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Congress there. I'm glad you did because, as you know, there is a big uh, push right now in Washington, particularly from the Department of Education, to look at um, programs in the for-profit college sector and, and actually looking at the level of debt that so many of those students take on. Specifically, the Department of Education shows that colleges owned by for-profit education providers um, have campuses where fewer than 20 percent of student loans are being repaid. Is this a matter of financial aid just being given out too frequently to people who can't afford it, or is there something else at work? Well, it's, it's partly that these for-profit institutions tend to predominantly serve low and moderate income students. 96% uh, of the students have uh, family income under $50,000. Uh, more than two-thirds of the students are independent, um, non-traditional students. So these are students that are more likely to not complete the education, uh, to drop out, and to default on their loans. So essentially giving credit or giving loans to people who can't afford it to service it in the, in the first place. But what you point out that as more people are returning for education and applying for aid and the like, that's not bringing down at any point the prices or uh, the, um, the availability of that loan to people right now. Are you looking at a bubble perhaps in college tuition? Um, we're, we're not at a bubble yet. I mean, there's still a lot of value in a college education. For the past five years, uh, incomes haven't appreciated while the debt continues to grow. So it is starting to get out of sync, the debt at graduation versus the starting salaries. Mm -hmm. As a general rule, you shouldn't borrow more than your expected starting salary for your entire education. And the average there for a public university was $7,000, but you see tuition rates $26,000 and far above that right now. You don't think well, th that there is a bubble at this point? Not at this point because there is some intrinsic value in the education. Mm -hmm. It's not gone in too far out of sync with the, the value of the education. But there are some fields of study where people are having difficulty getting jobs and there are some uh, where people are not. I think part of the problem is that the need-based grants haven't kept pace with uh, inflation. Yeah. Uh, they're, they've been relatively stagnant, and the Pell Grant is not going to increase next year compared to this year, even though college costs will go up. It's a, it's a great point. I mean, we wanted to look at this because, um, as, as we pointed out there, that growing amount of student loan debt outpacing that of credit cards, it's a story we're going to try to keep an eye on. It seems a uh, very important narrative to track.